Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, plainly reviewing plain type things. This is a craft by Battery, Battery spelled with three I's instead of a Y, and it is an F4 Phantom, and is it just me or is it kind of being a bit laggy? Oh yes, of course, that would be because I'm in .90, which has a slight bit of a problem like that, and 1.0 does not. I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about giving up on playing with it at all in this version, even though it is for this version, and just going to 1.0. Would everyone be okay with that if I just took everything that's left in .90 and just go ahead and try it in 1.0 and skip over even launching 9.0 in uh, .90 anymore? Because cause I, don't, I think that would be better. It would also look better. I'm gonna do that, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna close this now. Of course, a small downside to this idea is that some planes may not work properly at all. Ah, please, please let me launch this. This is really dumb, okay? This is really dumb. When you tell me that I can't launch it in a sandbox save because you don't know the size of it, that's really dumb. It's a sandbox save. It doesn't matter what size it is. Yeah, sorry about that. I just have to rage about that every time I come across it. These are the planes, by the way, that we're reviewing today. Of course, starting with the F4 Phantom, like I already showed a minute ago, which looks slightly different with the, the different parts, but still looks reasonably good, other than this minor clipping here, and I do not blame them for that, of course, and I know this is technically modifying the whoops, and I know this is technically modifying the design, but... I want it to be prettier, so there we go. It ever so slightly sticks out. It actually looks good still, at least in my opinion. It does look slightly off with the clippiness there, but that's okay. And I'm trying to ignore that because that bugs me as always. Different, you know, clippy things bug me. This looks kind of cool though, like the sunken tip in the nose. Whatever, let's launch it. Also, I just suddenly remembered, if you hear any sound in the background that sounds like someone strumming a guitar, that would be because someone is strumming a guitar in the background. That would be the manager of the apartment is actually downstairs from where I live, and he's playing his guitar right now. And, you know, it's not that loud, but I can hear it, and you might be able to hear it as well. I doubt it, though. But here we are, in any case, taking off with the F4 Phantom. I'm liking the way this is flying. Feels like we could seriously do some damage with this. Like, it just looks nice. I mean, other than the clippiness, that is kind of like, uh. But, is that two cockpits in one? That's two cockpits in one. Anyhow, let's pull up really hard. Very nice. I like how it flies. It, it does well. It, the transition did not kill this craft. The transition, I don't know how it flew in point I know, but the transition to 1.0 is still a nice craft, which is good. It's always good when you have a nice craft, you know, things, reasons. Anyhow, let's go on to the next one. By the way, sorry if I seem ever so slightly out of it today. I had a bit of a rough night. This is an interesting little glitch caused by the transition to this version. I'm sure that's what's caused it. Uh, I'm guessing this piece used to be different. And I'm sure that it would have fit a lot better before this. Let's see if we can get it to rotate into place, or if all those parts... Yeah, I thought so. All those parts are based off of it, so they're kind of all rotated incorrectly around it, which is rather unfortunate. That being said, it looks like I can... Well, at least with that piece, I can just rotate it back into place. Of course, this one would require moving it as well as rotating it. All right, I've done my best to sort of paste it back together. Hopefully this will function as originally intended. If it doesn't, I'll try moving the wings slightly and see if that works better. This is an F-14 replica, as you might have noticed by now. I like this idea, how they did that. It's interesting. A little gap in there, of course, caused by that. Intakes. Oh, yeah, the, the old Mark I cockpits, yeah, put back to, get, back to back like that would have made sense. But, of course, the new version does not work nearly as well, especially including the clippiness. Of course, the old one, I think, would have been the same amount of clippiness, and it still would have been like, ah, ah, the clippy, the clippy everywhere. It's like Windows all over again. The, the old Windows, you know, the clippy. Was that a Windows thing, or was that Microsoft Word and other Microsoft products, or was it Windows in its entirety? I don't remember. Also, I just noticed there is a communicatron thingy antenna in the very tip of the nose. That's a cool little detail. Like, it's so little, you almost would never notice, but it's there. This craft was also by battery, by the way. I forget if I mentioned that. If I did not, that is the case. Oh, that has two... Oh. Eh. That's slightly weird. 
But oh well, I'm going to ignore it for now. Also, I just noticed when this thing pulls up, it better not pull up suddenly, or I'm gonna break off the engines. Okay, cool. I was worried there for a minute. Very worried. Alright, we got two engines on the back, so this thing has a pretty good amount of uh, high power. Oh, it does want to tip, uh, dip down quite a bit on its own. But otherwise, it's flying pretty well. It's going pretty fast. Let's see how well it takes pulling up. It's not the most maneuverable thing in the world. Of course, I have it configured for faster flights. Not as maneuverable. Of course, if we rotate those wings out, who knows how it will change. So let's try launching it again with the wings rotated out. I'm also going to save a version of this since it's modified. That way you can get the modified version of it as well since I had to modify it slightly to get it to work. So first, let's rotate this out to about... That seems about the right angle. Not sure, but let's give it a go. All right, here we are. Oh, it actually hadn't loaded yet, but I thought it had because I'm dumb for some reason. That is interesting, the way those are placed there to give it that little extra look of the uh, bit in the middle. That's a clever little trick. Oh, I almost hit the engines. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Whoosh. Barely pulled up in time. Also, didn't have S... Mm, excuse me, didn't have SAS on. That was my uh, first mistake. Man, I love the way, like, ignoring the fact that there's some problems, obviously, with it being imported like this and all that. I like the way these are set up here. The, uh, the cockpit, this kind of just general smooth flow of the craft. Like, it's, it's very smooth. It goes together right. Like, it, it looks aerodynamic. It's very cool. It's pretty fast, too. I forget how fast the other one was going. Part of the reason this one's going faster is because we're um, going out in a straight long line for longer. But technically, I believe the other the other configuration should be faster. Very interesting. I think it's a little bit more maneuverable, although I'm not so sure about how the uh, control authority. Like they both, you have to uh, keep pulling up because if you don't keep pulling up, oops. Yep, I turned off SAS for a moment. Yeah, if you turn off SAS. On, let me get level it just goes down on its own so yeah this is a plane where you definitely need the SAS's on at all times or you're going to risk screwing yourself over quite badly let's see see I'm doing these turns like this to lose velocity so you can see I came down from about 200 meters per second to under 100 meters per second now. I'm coming down a bit. Well, I was coming down a bit too fast. Everything's... Ah, oh, that's too fast. Whoa. Okay. Everything seems fine. We're on the ground. Everything seems fine. Yeah. There we go. Successful landing. I mean, it's going to take a little bit of time to slow down to a stop. But otherwise, successful landing. Oh, yeah. Let me, I'm going to take it. There you go. Screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Next up, we have the <laughs> smallest aircraft. Or at least that's how it was advertised. Oh, this looks like a, this was designed to exploit Infiniglide, which means it would not work in this version. Or at least, theoretically, it wouldn't. Let's give it a try. All right, here we are on the runway, trying not to fall over, trying to build up speed by rapidly moving these controls. And it does give us ever so slightly little bits of speed but not enough I don't know we are speeding up slightly though maybe that's more because like we have this angle downwards right it's also it's also just the fact that the runway is ever so slightly sloped oh my god this thing is so funny uh, KSP overpowered reaction wheel physics it's possible that there is still some way to infiniglide but this this is not it we can do backflips though <laughs> This thing is so overpowered, it does backflips and side flips. Oh, no, not quite a side flip. Well, if you get the momentum right, it'll do a side flip. But it does backflips and front flips and all your flippy needs. And next up, we have the Maw. Oh, yes, that last craft was by someone called Thunderous Echo. I forgot to say that. I feel bad now. This is called the Moth in the file name, but it's called the Fling Bell in here, which is interesting. Oh, it's got... Oh, it's got like a front little engine to help it take off, I guess. Because that is in the wrong place for it to be a VTOL. Yeah, see, really in the wrong place. Interesting. It's the Fling Bell, the Moth, 
and this is by Ryan one seven seventh, or I guess the one hundred and seventy seventh Ryan. But in any case, full speed. I think it was two to close the doors. Yes, it was. Okay, let's get into the air first. Oh yes, of course, it's gonna do those launch effects because we have an engine pointing right at the ground for takeoff. Beautiful. Alright, I've disengaged- no, apparently I didn't push the key hard enough. I tried to disengage the front engine. Well, apparently disengaging the front engine doesn't actually work. So the action group for that is actually broken. Cool. But, we can close the door, which should make the engine stop affecting our flight profile. And we can pull up really hard. This thing's pretty maneuverable. It also looks really strange. Very cool. Also, I see why it was called the Moth. I don't see why it was called the Fling Bell yet. Interesting how uh, far forward the uh, oops, that's a bad turn. That's a bad turn. That's gonna that's gonna end badly. That's possibly gonna end badly. Never mind. Everything is awesome. The uh, vertical stabilizers. Very uh, forward angled. Interesting. There's also Oh wait, no, that's just part of that part. I, really? Does that part have a black strap like the stripe like that? That's the hmm. I don't remember it having a black stripe like that, but there's no extra part there, so it does. Interesting. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. So this one survived the transition fairly well. It's interesting looking. It's kind of silly. Flies well. Very nice. And finally for today, we have the Turbo Potato, also by the 177th Ryan there. <laughs> ah. I very much love, immediately, how it's using the nacelles on the ends of the wings like this. Although, of course, this should go the other way around, as, you know, the, the texture shows. But that's not his fault. That is the game's fault. And, uh, oh, it also has engines here. So this thing has four engines on it. And it is called Turbo in the name. Part Stunt Plane. Part Sunt Plane. I don't know what a part sunt is, but uh, this is a part sunt plane. Also, I'm imagining that this bit here is like some sort of radar dome thing. Not radar dome, like, I don't know, avionics thing. The fighter plane thing. I like some fighter planes. They have a thing that looks like this, kind of sticking out of the belly. Although normally it'd be, you know, on the belly. And and it's giving me an idea that I should make a plane that has, some, has one of these uh, nacelles like this but flipped over so it's upside down on the belly and it's like yeah this is the flight package thing whatever it's called i don't know the terminology i just know it's a thing that i've seen on fighters which is cool all right here we are on the runway engaging engines and i sound more excited now than i did throughout the rest of the video which is funny i guess i'm finally waking up because i did decide to record this in the morning which possibly not the best idea let's see what happens when we disengage sas yes it wants to go down ever so slightly and, um, I imagine this plane could very easily rip itself apart if you're not careful. As well as turn the pilot into goo. If they had simulated, you know, turning pilots into goo from G-forces. Wow, this thing rolls really hard. Like, this thing will just roll and roll and roll if you're not careful. Of course, uh, I think it will also overheat and destroy itself if you, go, if you push it hard enough. So let's go ahead and try that. Come on, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh no, it's not going to get much faster than this. Alright, well, since we are now at its maximum speed at this altitude, let's go ahead and pull up sharply. Damn, no aerodynamic failure. I was hoping it would break apart. Oh, oh, I just noticed the massive amounts of struts on it. Yes, this thing was ready for this kind of abuse. It's been strutted carefully. And the, the roll, like I said, the roll is a bit tricky. And camera shake camera shake everywhere because it's just aerodynamics actually let's go ahead and on this one let's do the um I believe it's display aero forces in f come on there we go display aero forces so red is drag yellow is um i guess like control authority and blue is lift so this thing actually doesn't have that much lift but it has a lot of control surfaces doing crazy shit trying to keep it stable and then it has a lot of drag because we're going very, very fast. And then if I pull up, huge amount of lift, huge amount of drag. And now we have just a lot of lift. And then as I start rolling, huge amounts of control authority. Very cool. Also, also oscillating. Oh, now it's not oscillating. Okay. 
I was gonna say, it's very, very oscillating, and it is a bit, but then it calms down, because it's smart enough to know how to calm down, which is cool. Alright, let's turn off the engine, and we're gonna give this one a landing, or, or crash, you know, I don't know yet, depends. And then, and then we'll, um, end the episode there. I like the, uh, design of the vertical stabilizer, both the fact that it's that, like, T shape, and the fact that you did this, um, one bit on the bottom going out, and then one bit above going out, and it's on this, uh, what's it called, uh, NCS cone, I don't know, no, tail cone type B or whatever the hell it was called, I don't remember, but I just, I think it's a very neat design, I'm liking it. So yeah, we're gonna pull around here, we're actually gonna land on the runway, unless I fuck this up, which, you know, just because I'm good doesn't mean I'm that good, and still fuck up a landing, especially when, you know, I'm not doing a proper approach, I'm just kind of winging it. Oh, I almost winged it. By that I mean I almost, you know, crashed it into the thing. Let's, uh, can we lift off again? If we can't, oh, 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 never mind. <laughs> I was going to try to lift off to pull up a bit at an angle to uh, get us off of being so far like, you know, off the center line of the runway, going the wrong way. Not off the center line, but going at the wrong angle down the runway. But it turned out I was able to turn it while I was on the ground. This thing is very maneuverable, looks cool, and, and just, yeah, I, I like this plane. I like this plane a lot. I wish it could go a little faster, but that's okay. I do like it. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in space.